bless you. All the Word of God is exciting. But, but today's lesson could be the most exciting thing you've ever heard. It's called Transcending Laws, or the Higher Powers. And uh, uh, it, it is really very exciting. I wrote down some notes early this morning uh, that says uh, two boys in the neighborhood uh, can have power between themselves. Another kid moves in, and he's a year older, and a little stronger, and the power changes to a higher power. Somebody stronger moves in, and the lesser power diminishes at that time. Early this morning when you walked into this room, there was a power here called darkness. And then a higher power walked in with more authority, and the darkness went away. It lost its strength because a higher power assumed the rulership in this room. And uh, I've seen very often someone sit at the head of a table, and a new person walks in the room, and that person sits at the head of the table very graciously gets up and goes around and sits on the side, maybe down close to the other end. Because a higher power walked in that had more authority and he lost the head of the table. How many have ever seen a thing like that? The rest of you hadn't been anywhere. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a pity. I've seen it a thousand times. Somebody assuming that they should sit at the front and suddenly someone says, would you kind of go to the back? And, and a higher power has come. Now that all ends up with that sin has an authority until the blood of Jesus comes around. And suddenly, sin has no power. And the Bible says, let not sin therefore have dominion over you. There are transcending laws in the universe. Let's go into it. Paul teaches us concerning, in this chapter, chapter 13 of the book of Romans, he, he teaches us about good government. But it doesn't stop with good government in the political area, good government, good government also in banking, a good government in homes, good government in industry. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter where you get one, two, or three, four people together, we need good operation there. And all the people said, and, and, and so Paul is teaching us concerning good government, but there are transcending laws in that government. Now, we want you to really get to this today because uh, uh, what we're talking about now is what caused millions of martyrs, millions of people gave up their life on what I'm going to talk about at this moment. So we have to come to understanding levels of authority. God's laws, as you will, should know and will know, God's laws supersede human laws. Any law that any human whether it's Adolf Hitler or Benito Mussolini, uh, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Now, in, 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 uh, in Sweden, they tested this. The men in the parliament made a law that you could not discipline a child. And especially you couldn't do it in a school of any kind. Well, Uff Ekman and his, and his school permitted his teachers to discipline children with a spank. And he was brought up in the court of the land, him against the government, the parliament, mind you, like going against the Congress in Washington. And he went to court, and the judge looked down and said, you lawmakers are wrong. He said, the preacher's right. He says, you you discipline your dogs, but you don't discipline your children. Says the court is dismissed. And he won the case, you see. Now, the Bible commands us to discipline children. You discipline your horses. A horse won't obey if he's not disciplined. And yet, our own children 
we don't discipline them. Then we wonder why they get clear off from under control and refuse to obey anybody, you or the courts or anybody else. God's laws supersede all human laws. We are to obey our government unless it contradicts the laws of God. How many would agree with that? You say, why? Well, those laws are made by little people that live down the street before you voted them into that office back there. A man in the courthouse right here said, says, now, listen, I want you to know that when we get, when we get, uh, uh, when we get information and when we get uh, told what to do from the big fellows in, in Annapolis, we do it. I leaned over to his nose and I said, I want you to know something. You're a peanut and they are a peanut. And all of you just voted in people and I can see that you get voted out if you want to get out. You're not God. And what you say is not the last word. The last word is in the Bible. That's the way I got the permit in the church up there. He signed it immediately. Unless the government begins to meddle in morals and religion, we have to obey our government. If the government says that you cannot be a Christian, like in Russia and China and many other states in the world, then it has stepped outside its level of authority. The authority doesn't count anymore. How many agree to that? You can't be a blind follower of human beings. It don't matter if they call it Congress or, or whether they call it uh, uh, by any other name, such parliaments and so forth. We don't obey men, little men, that in a few years their dust is going to be down in the ground and their souls are going to be in hell. A lot of people don't, haven't come to Well, in our country, you haven't had to understand that very much until this just lately, and that we can cancel their laws, but they cannot cancel God's laws. We are to obey our family. The Bible in the Ten Commandments, the first commandment with a promise for long life is that you obey your father and your mother. But we live in a world where a mother tells her 13-year-old daughter to lay with a man for $20. You don't have to obey that kind of stuff. Tell your children to go out and steal to bring things home. You don't have to obey that stuff. Are you here? We're to be our, our family authorities unless they contradict God's law. If, if a parent tells his child or the husband tells his wife, you cannot go to church, well, that's none of his authority. That's not in the realm of his authority. His authority is to go out, make bread and put it on the table and put clothes on your back. He's not God just because he happens to be a man that married a woman and has a kid. He's still that little old boy, really, in God's sight. He's just a little male on his way into eternity. He's not God just because he married a girl and had a baby. Are you here? And there are a lot of men like that. The people that would be in church right now, but the husband can't go to church. You're going to go to hell, I can tell you that. You'll be in hell before your toes get cold. And forever you'll say, I wish, wish to God I'd had enough sense to have gone to church. I believe the Bible, and I don't matter what the world believes today. This generation is not a generation of believing straight. There's crooked as a corkscrew. And if you're going to go by popular opinion, you will go to hell, every one of you. I am not living by popular opinion. I'm living by eternal truth. That didn't begin the day you were born. If you're here, say amen. amen. You cannot tell your family they can't serve God. You're not God. They have a right to serve God. And all the people said. He has moved from his position of physical authority. I'm in point number two. And takes upon himself now 
spiritual authority. You, you might say he's moved from, from corporal dictatorship into divine dictatorship. Can you see how far off he is? Which he is not able to take. Unless humans, unless human laws are in rebellion to divine authority, the Bible teaches us that we should obey them. We're not rebels. This country today is full of rebels. Has nothing to do with God either. They're full of rebels. As sure as you're looking at me right now, we will have bloodshed in this country between the races. Just as sure the devil is fomenting it. He is exaggerating it. In these last days, which my message will be about this morning, the devil wants everybody to hate everybody. Then if you can't see where that comes from, then there's something wrong with you. Hate comes from the devil. I'm not going to hate anybody. I refuse to be a hater because that's of the devil to hate. God forgives. God forgives. All these people chasing around our country saying, rights, rights, rights. Why don't they take some responsibility? That would help a little. You know, why don't we take some responsibility? We need a better country. We need better looking houses with a little paint on them. We need better gardens. We need better lawns. We need God work more so we need anything else. And all the people said, in Romans 12, I mean in Romans chapter 13, we're going to begin verses 1 and 2. Let every man be subject unto the higher powers. Uh, he is speaking here of, 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 your, of, your, of your governments. For, uh, for there's no power but of God. The powers that be, they're ordained of God. God ordained government. Uh, it, it's the only way to regulate society. You cannot regulate society. I was on the Autobahn last week, and a preacher was driving me 120 miles an hour. And the only problem was he had to stay in the right lane. They were passing him so fast in the left lane. I said, do you, do, 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 do you have any maximum speed? No, he said, if I had a better car, I'd go. F no, I said, you, you're doing all right here. We can't live in a world where there's no authority. If you do, the whole of society breaks down and everybody gets his gun and shoots everybody else. That's what the devil wants. That's what he's done for 6,000 years is, is make people kill people. We were in India this past week. They must have five or six wars going on in India that you don't seem to know anything about. They're fighting every day. They're killing every day. In Africa, that's hardly a country in Africa. They don't have war going on right now. This is wrong, that's wrong, this is wrong, that's wrong. No, the devil is wrong. And you don't ever come to peace with a gun. All you do is one of them wins and the other one says, I'll get me more ammunition and I'll be back. Because the cause of it's on the inside. Can you say amen? I refuse to be part of men doing like that. It says, whatsoever therefore, whosoever therefore resisted the power, that is your civil authorities, he resisted the ordinance of God because we have to have laws in order to live together. And that they shall resist, shall receive to themselves damnation. If you break the laws of your land, the Bible says you, you also break your relationship with God. You just can't go around breaking the laws of the land and think you're a good, not only a citizen here, but a citizen in heaven. It doesn't work that way. Obeying Rome was not an easy thing to do for the Christians that he was writing to. He was writing to people in Rome, the very headquarters of old Caesar himself that had killed hundreds of thousands of people. Rome was overbearing. It was a dictatorship. And a few years after the writing of this epistle, that Rome would destroy Jerusalem and burn the temple in Jerusalem. These Romans, or this Roman world was a world of trouble, insurrection, sorrow, tears, persecution. The Romans had laws of religion demanding that the Roman subjects worship the emperor. <laughs> and that was a law. And the Christians couldn't obey that law. They could obey the speed limit 
They could pay their taxes. But Caesar was a human, and he was not to be worshipped as a god. Can you say amen? The way the church in Rome was constructed made it difficult for Christians to find their place with the government because there were Jewish members there who only wanted to obey Jewish laws, and there were people from many nations that gravitated to Rome, and they had an inkling to be with the Grecian laws or the, or the European laws or the Roman laws. And so he was writing a difficult letter to a group of people. Then, and he was telling them what to do. No equivocation about it. In verse 3 of chapter 13 we're dealing with, For the rulers are not a terror to good works. That is, if they're good rulers. Now, Hitler was a terror to good works, but he wasn't talking about that kind of a man. He was talking about the civil laws by which we live in, in, in our society. Will thou then not be afraid of the power that that which is good and that which shall have praise of the same, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. Good government is a minister of God. Isn't that nice? We have, we have people in our church that are part of the government downtown here, and they're on, on certain committees and boards and representatives and so forth. Good people can pass good things that's good for all of us. Can you say amen? But evil people can pass evil things that's bad for everybody. And he wants you to see the difference. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. If you go out and shoot somebody, they're going to be looking for you. And it'll be bad for you when they find you. You go rob a store, and, and you're going to be in trouble. Somebody's going to pick you up and put you in jail. And your liberty, all finished when they clang the iron door at the jail, you see. Then you have to sit in there with those other men as mean as you are, fighting each other, cutting each other, knocking each other, and cussing each other. It's a pretty bad life. I was told in Chicago by a Jewish lawyer that had been working in the city hall there for, for, uh, uh, for 12 years. He said, Summerall, there's never a night they don't kill somebody in that jail. Never a night we take them out the next morning. And so, the big city jail in Chicago, I guess one of the largest in the world, it's a death house, you see. For who? For transgressors. Not the people driving down the street in their new car. Not the people living in that nice home. But for people that transgress, they go to the place of death. And from there, if they don't get right with God in jail, you, you know where a lot of people are going to get to heaven? Would you like to know? Would you like to know? Two of you. From, from, from the hospitals and from the jailhouses. They get in there and they're like the thief on the cross. I said, my, I sure made a lot of mistakes to get where I am now. Can't walk anymore. They got me on a cross here. And, 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 and so they're going to say, God, can you save a sinner? And Jesus will say, well, that's what I came down there for. You'd be amazed at the jailbirds that'll be in heaven. They got to the end of themselves, and there they found God, pitiful and tender and kind and forgiving. I'm mean, glad you serve a God like that. Give him a hand then if you do. <laughs> Civil government, this number A under point three. Civil government is for the benefit of good people. Good citizens are always appreciated. And I, I thank God for that. Proverbs 14, 34, righteousness exalteth a nation. But sin, that, that, that sin means transgression, rebellion. Sin and rebellion are a reproach to any nation, any people, any people. And we got so many transgressors and rebellious people in this country today, and they, and they are a reproach to the name of America. In almost all the countries of the world where we go, they got Americans in jail there, and, and most of them are, are in jail for drugs, and next after that for rebellion and, and stealing in those countries. And it, it makes you hang your head, you know, when you, when, you, when you read things like that. Civil government has the responsibility of punishing lawbreakers, even to death. And that brings in capital punishment, you see. That if you take someone else's life, they have a right to remove your life from the earth because you forfeited your freedoms that God had given you. And all the people said, 
at Roman, at, at verse 5, which is the next verse, at Romans 13, uh, wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, or, or you might say jailhouse, but also for conscience sake. You can't cheat on your income tax every year and have a good conscience about it. Can you say amen? amen. Yeah. I don't take anything off my taxes except my gift to the church. My tax thing is so easy to fill out. The only thing I take off is what I give to the church. Oh, there, a preacher can take off a lot of things, you know, but I don't take off anything. If they want it, bless God, let them have it. I'm going to get along all right anyway. I don't ask you to be that way because you're not me and I'm not you and you're glad you're not me. Anyway, I just want to have a good conscience of what I'm talking to you about. We should obey laws of our land because it has the power to punish for disobedience. That's a good reason for obeying. We should also obey in order to keep a good conscience before our God because sin is sin whether you're caught or whether you're not caught. You still have to meet God with it. Can you say amen? I asked a man in China one time, I said, is it wrong to steal? And he got up real close where nobody could hear him. He says, it's all right unless you get caught. You see, that's the, that's the philosophy of the sinner, that you can do it, but just don't get caught. It gets nasty if you get caught. God's already caught you. How many hear that already? And in Romans 13, 6, it says, For this cause uh, we, we, we pay tribute, that's your taxes, uh, for, for they are God's ministers, uh, uh, attending continually uh, upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to tribute, uh, tribute to duty, to what is due, tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to them whom fear is due, honor to whom honor is due. To have a strong country, we must pay our taxes. And to have a good country, you have to have good people keeping the laws of the country. And in verse 8, it says, Owe no man anything. I'd be afraid right now to say, how many of you could stand up and say, you owe nobody anything? There might be less than a baker's dozen. I don't owe anybody anything because I determined well, missionaries, you, maybe you don't know it. On the mission field, nobody will own a missionary or anything. They know he's going home soon anyway. And so you have to pay cash on the mission field. You're a transit, and you're there on a temporary basis. And so if you don't, if you don't have your money, you don't get anything. They're not going to trust you. And so I learned a long time ago to pay as I go. And my wife and I, if we want something, we save up for it. That's a lot nicer and having somebody writing you nasty letters saying, I'm going to turn you over to, anyway. I know you're guilty, so I won't look up. I'll look down right now. I recommend that none of God's people be in debt. You know, for a house, for a house, or for a car, we, we understand that. But we don't understand it for a refrigerator and dishpans. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, Brother Sumrall, you're meddling. You're not preaching. It's good metal preaching. <laughs> should, Christians should not be slack in paying their bills. Don't call yourself a good Christian if you don't pay on time. You're not a good Christian. Because to be a good Christian is to be Christ-like. And Christ, number one, wouldn't have went in debt. And, 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 and number two, he'd have paid it. Borrowing money very often ends friendships. Now, you see, I am having lived so many hundreds of years. How many think I'm several hundred years old? One time they asked me if Mrs. Washington was my wife, and I said, no, Miss Louise is my wife. I don't date back to George Washington. But I pastored in the Philippines, and the Filipinos bore off from one another and from the bank or anybody. They'll borrow from anybody that will loan them something. But in my church, not one time from the very beginning, not one time did I ever loan a Filipino anything. You say, why? I didn't want to lose him from my church. And so if he came up and says, I need 20 pesos so bad, would you just loan me 20 pesos? 
I look at him and smile and I say, you know, you're so sweet. You're so lovely. Here's the 20 pesos. It's free. Don't ever give it back. You know what he'll do? He'll always be with me and pay his tithes and God gets the money back real soon. 